Welcome to Sons of Gun, a podcast about the DC Universe. I'm Alex Gunn. And I'm Justin, also a gun. <laughs> I'm Pete. Uh, Pete's not a gun, he's super bad. And we are going to be talking <laughs> about The Flash, the movie that is currently in theaters. Woo-hoo! Now, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, Woo! boy, this is... This is starting off somewhere Woo! not good already. I can already tell. I can I can see an hour in the run future. Run faster! Of yeah, I know what's, oh, Just maybe I, run faster! I, I can't I, tell. I, he, he actually, I can't tell anymore. Regardless, yeah. if you haven't seen the movie, we're definitely going to get into running. spoilers. We're going to be talking about our impressions, of course, with the purview of this podcast. We're going to be talking about what it all means, if anything, for the future of James Gunn's DC Universe. That's what we've been working towards the whole time. This is ostensibly, even though there's two more movies after this, the end of the DCEU that was started with Man of Steel. We've still got Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. When we talk about the post credit scenes here, we'll talk about what that means and what universe that takes place in. Uh, also, we got Blue Beetle coming up, and that is also yeah. technically not part of the DCEU, even though it probably started there. The way that James Gunn has described it is that Blue Beetle is the first DCU character, his DCU character, but the first DCU movie is proper is going to be Superman Legacy. Hope that's not too confusing for you. If that, that is, is too confusing, confusing oh boy, get ready yeah. to yeah. talk about The Flash. So l- let's get into it with impressions. Now, I think everybody is pretty aware this bombed at the box office over the weekend after months of James Gunn saying this is the greatest superhero movie ever made, David Zaslav, everybody's favorite movie critic, saying that he saw it three times and that it was his favorite superhero movie ever. We talked on the podcast here about Stephen King loved the movie. Tom Cruise loved the movie so much he reportedly called up the filmmakers and talked to them for 15 minutes about how great it was. And then... Ooh, cruise call. Cruise con call troll is what I like to call it. (laughs) Uh, And then at the box office this past weekend, it made less money than Black Adam, which was generally considered a bomb. And it's uh, not expected to do basically anything. There's been a lot of talk and recrimination about what went wrong and where this box office disaster came from. But before we even get to any of that, that's sort of setting the scene more than anything where we are as we're taping the podcast. Curious to get your guys' reactions. Uh, we li- I always like to talk about this when we are talking about a movie that's currently in theaters. How did you see the movie and what was your reaction when you saw it? Pete, I'm curious to go to you because my suspicion was maybe you'd be the outlier, but now based on your reaction at the top of the podcast, I can't tell at all. <laughs> oh, interesting. Well, I, I like to throw you for a loop. Uh, so... I went to see it, um, I think it was Saturday, and uh, it was an early showing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, I know you guys both have children, and, you know, uh, that's, that's, uh, you know, much love to your children. But I, you know, it's a signed seating now, and this row of, like, six kids sat in the row in front of me. So, of course, I moved. Uh, The Mm -hmm. mom gave me some... You hate kids just like the Flash movie. No, well, I just know, no, no, like, no. The okay. The Flash movie hates babies, not all. Yeah, I don't want to sit through a movie with, like, all that chatter. I want to be able to hear the movie. So I moved so I wouldn't be miserable. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I had to take a that. seat. I the kids followed you. The kids followed you. And they're oh, like, no, they love Pete. you. You're the Papa Pete. Papa Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just went to the end of the aisle, which kind of stuck, because then I just was kind of, like, looking at it. Uh, sideways but I was happy the fact that like it was packed normally it's the most packed uh, movie I've seen uh, like I've seen a bunch of movies this year and this was the most so I was surprised to hear the box office numbers because my theater uh, had a lot of people in it Um, Mm. yeah I mean I don't know if we're just talking about the no no no. well and I want to hear what did you think of the movie what was your reaction just like broad strokes how'd you feel about it and this legitimately I know, I, again, like the reason I'm asking is usually you're the minority opinion between me and Justin where we rail out the movie and you're like, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed the cameos, et cetera. So this is not setting you up for anything. I'm honestly curious, like, what did you think of the movie? And also let's keep in mind, just a little context, The Flash is not Pete's favorite hero. Absolutely no, not. No. no, I don't like, I mean, I, when the movie started and I saw the CGI, I was like, ooh, this isn't good. This is probably going to affect the enjoyment of my of me in this movie. 
But I ended up having a great time with this movie, and I realized maybe I'm just more of a basic bitch than I want to admit. Uh, but man, <laughs> I got, I got you choked mean, up. I was moved by the movie. I I love the the after credit scene. Um, I don't know. Like after seeing the Snyderverse, like I, 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 I'm having a, a better time with DC movies. I don't know, like uh, that whole thing with the slow motion babies flying out the window, I thought was so stupid and hilarious that like, uh, you know. You liked it. I liked it. I, I liked it very much. I didn't want to, but there it was. And uh, Michael Keaton being back. Um, uh, yeah. Hmm. Justin, what about you? You saw it right before this, just a couple of hours yeah. ago. Uh, prime time, when everybody's talking about it several days prime later. Time. <laughs> uh, well, let impression? me say, yeah. perhaps the opposite of Pete's. I saw it at a, also a morning screening uh, in Times Square, the heart of New York City. Oh, wow. So many people, 10.30 a.m. screening on a Wednesday, roll in only person in the theater nice. not a single soul were you worried they I mean, weren't going to start cool. the movie on time because nobody was in the theater when i was looking to be like oh i'm gonna go i can make this screening and still pick up my kids from school there's only one ticket sold i was like okay well they have to show it so i get there that person didn't show up i kicked back i got my coffee out checked my phone when i needed to Pete, oh. you would have hated it oh god that's that's <laughs> awful uh, but so, and then for the movie, like, it's a shame this movie's getting such a bad look, because I actually think it's definitely one of the better DC movies. It has a little bit more, the The second half has a lot of heart to it. It has um, some yeah. interesting pieces. There are some interesting scenes. There's still a lot of, like, formulaic stuff and ghosts of sort of the Snyder way of doing things where everyone's having a bad time all the time. But this movie actually is the brightest of the DC movies. I didn't mind a lot of the CGI and sequences. We'll talk about my complaints in a little bit, I'm sure. But like, I honestly walked away from this feeling like that was a pretty decent movie. I don't think it deserves the the shame that it's getting. Hmm, interesting. I guess I'm going to be the minority opinion here. Now, I saw it about a week earlier. You're also the biggest Flash fan of the three. I am the biggest Flash fan. Yeah. But I legitimately, and I was thinking about it this later, this was like two days later, I was like, wait a second, why am I not relating to this at all as a Flash fan? That's very weird for me. Because yeah, I do love the character. I love uh, Jeff Johns' run on The Flash. is one of my favorite comic book runs of She's all time. The bones I've, of this movie. Yes, I've watched... Uh, 184 episodes of the flash tv show and everything that's so, insane for separate reasons yeah that's crazy so uh I, I love the flash so i should be in the tank for this movie uh, and i saw it at a fan screening which is like the ideal way of seeing it with people screaming mm -hmm. and yelling and they're already like should be all on board but i'll tell you what first of all surprisingly muted reaction for a fan screening like the laughter was not that much it was not that present yeah there was clapping for the cameos quote unquote cameos that i'm sure we'll talk about later on which definitely put me off but i didn't like this movie at all i wait you didn't like the cameos i hated the cameos oh! and, I, and i have very specific reasons for that when we eventually jump to that like the reason i like them is not just because of the real world reasons but actually just because yeah. of the movie and this is my overall problem with the movie is like first of all i i like dark humor i was just not vibing with the tone of the humor i did not understand i could not wrap my head around the idea of like it felt to me like if you gave looney tunes the mission statement of making a direct sequel to man of steel that for some reason stars not superman very strange to me like it, it, the whole thing the whole endeavor seemed very weird it seemed like it wasn't necessarily a flash movie but that's maybe why i didn't care about it too much like it had the bones that's, of a flash movie that's but why i liked it it, it maybe yeah it could be but like it didn't seem to have the heart or the mission statement of the flash ezra miller we haven't necessarily talked about ezra miller's multitudinous crimes that certainly didn't engender yes. me to begin with but frankly i i went in being like uh i feel very uncomfortable about ezra miller and everything involved in this movie yeah. with ezra miller 
But if if it's good and I laugh, it's good and I laugh, and I'll see how I feel after that. And frankly, I felt a certain sense of relief at the end of the movie. I was like, oh, I hated that. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. Now, now I don't need to separate the art and the artist because I hate both of these things. But overall, it just felt like it was there as a corporate exercise. You could see the bones of where scenes existed from the previous 10 year development of this movie 10 plus year development of this movie and it did some of my least favorite things ever like having character arcs where characters like nope i'm out of here and then one scene later they're like i'm back how can i help and it's just they weren't character arcs they're like three scene triptychs that try to explain things Things happen seemingly very randomly. There were really only two jokes in the entire movie that worked for me at all um, that I laughed you at. Didn't, the baby in the microwave, do you think that I was funny? I hated that. I, I straight up hated the whole baby sequence. I agree. The baby thing was very strange to me. It didn't what it didn't look good, I thought. And I was like, what does this mean? <laughs> I was pointing so, to the screen and being like, see, this is why I walked away from you kids. I want you to see. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to put you in a microwave. Papa yeah. Pete's going to put you you're in a microwave. You're old. The Papa Pete, why the baby in the microwave? <laughs> Papa Pete. The Well, let's talk about the, the visuals a little bit. So the director, Andy Muschietti, has come out with an explanation of a lot of the visuals where he's like, no, 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 that's not bad CGI. We did that on purpose because when the Flash is going through the speed force, when he's going fast, he sees things differently than other people. So that's why the baby is look like bad cgi but are purposeful cgi that's why well, don't I, buy that i thought it was kind of like a choice to be like this isn't realistic like we don't want to have realistic babies mm-hmm. in microwaves we want this to kind of look bad but also he, the guy should have came out and just been like hey um uh, people work on uh, CGI are very underpaid and very overworked and uh, don't get paid enough. So, yeah, you're going to get uh, this. Is what well, you're gonna get. So I would say, even not like the movie, I do buy the explanation. I just think it's a bad choice that doesn't make sense over the ways that they iterate it. And what I mean by that is like one of the central features of the movie is Barry runs into this thing that they call the Croto Bowl, right? Which is like yeah. a coliseum where you can see all of time in the multiverse stretching out in front Would of you. Would you rather it have been the speed force treadmill? The treadmill speed force? Cosmic thing? treadmill? Yeah. No, that's also stupid. I can, okay, I can uh, I'm just agree making sure. The cosmic treadmill you know, just kind of. I was so happy it wasn't a treadmill. I was like, no, well, no, I don't I, care. I, here's it's what not I'm a say. Like, my problem the is not the snow globe ball. of time. Perfect. Uh, the, my problem is not the chrono ball. My problem is so when they're in the chrono ball, you see these things that are like cutouts popping up. And I was like, yeah. okay, I don't like the way this looks. This looks weird. It's too uncanny mm-hmm. valley, but I get the choice that you're making here. This is how you're depicting time, even though I don't enjoy it. What right. doesn't make sense is that when you have things outside of the chrono ball that are not connected to the chrono ball also look like that then it doesn't seem purposeful. Like, to jump ahead to the cameo section, when they have all of these other universes coming in, and it's clearly just, they CGI'd ugh, Christopher Reeve, uh, Helen Slater, Nicolas Cage, all of these other people, like, they look like that Chrono Ball thing, which is supposed to be the whole multiverse, versus we're supposed to be peeking into their universe. It just doesn't make sense. And it's the same thing with the babies, where it's like, this just looks bad ultimately is what I'm getting from that. And that's very off putting in the movie as well. But I agree with you about it looking bad. The actual, the Chrono Ball thing where it was almost like a carnival shooting gallery. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, I, that was a weird choice. It reminded me a little bit of everything everywhere all at once. And mm-hmm. maybe that was a purposeful direction for them. I don't know if the timing works out uh, as an inspiration, but I actually like a weirder choice like that to represent that. I wish they had done it as a practical effect because that would have gotten rid of all of the like uncanny valley, like not quite Mm -hmm. human faces and bodies that we saw during that section. If it was something a little weirder, then they could have leaned into that weirdness and actually shot it well because it is such a weird concept. And the idea, like if it was a little more David Lynchy or something like that, where it was a more every day. And then when uh, the... Uh, flat the evil flash what are we calling um the, the i mean reverse the flash or dark flash or something Spike, like that uh, but it's barnacle not. barnacle flash barnacle, barnacle flash, flash. Uh, right. shrapnel flash yeah mm-hmm. uh when he when comes through at the beginning and sort of cuts through i was like oh this is cool i wish we could have dwelled on that a little bit because it's scary it's like jawsy yeah. but it's because of all of the cgi it had to be like this quick blobby thing and these blot and blobbed off and all that so like well I think and they also could have been i just 
while we're kind sorry, of sorry, I just want to mention real quick before I forget. Also, what is insane to me about that thing is the what are we calling him? Shrapnel Flash comes out, punches Barry out of the Speed Force and back in time, and he literally never refers to it at any point to anybody. He's like, Well, yeah. gotta get back in time. Nothing about that guy who was in the Speed Force and punched me. Insane. Yeah. Well, then I later agree. when he, he figures it all out, it's Very explained. Quickly very quickly at the end yeah. well, well but i will say I, I figured it out ahead of that like yeah sure. it does it like they needed to do it pretty quickly because we got it <laughs> yeah as soon as but he had the weird prong i was like oh he's oh, that there we go mm-hmm. yeah i i mean i think we figured it out before that like when he came out but it was just it bothered me the fact that perry was like Hey, I gotta get back in time, everybody. I gotta explain everything about timelines and things that happen to you, but not mention the dude that literally punched me back in time at any point, which feels like an important detail to mention. Yeah, yeah, but it's who are you gonna mention to yourself? Who is the thing? Bat- you know what I mean? Yourself, just... Batman, Su- Superwoman, Supergirl, whichever we're calling her. They're gonna be like, cool story, bro. Girl. Anyways, cool, cool uh, story, bro. Uh, yeah, I think it's just one of those things where while you're talking about the different universes and how bad it looked, I was in too deep to care. And I was just, I was more of a kind of like the timeline of the uh, Superman. And then it was just kind of like the reward of like me as a nerd knowing that uh, what's his name was almost Superman. And then hearing the story about Kevin Smith talking about how they wanted the spider that ended up being the spider in Wild Wild West. The fact that they had those things in this movie was just kind of like, it was just kind of like a memory, a timeline, a memory line of like, hey, remember this? Remember this almost happened? Remember all this? And then, you know, I'm a sucker for, if you're going to show me, a halfway decent looking Christopher Reeves just to kind of, so I can be like, oh my God, Christopher Reeves, I love it, miss you so much. <sighs> so yeah, I mean, yes, it didn't look great, but I was just happy that to see any kind of nod in his direction. Um, so rest in peace. But I, 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 yeah, I didn't care. I was in too deep. We were already into crazy town and beyond. So why not have different snow globes peek in, give little shouts out and then, uh, you know, it was weirdly meta, uh, and I think the reference of the way that they do the Eric Stoltz uh, Back to the Future thing, oh, yeah. it felt like sort of a callback to that in a weird way, but it wasn't played for a joke. It was played for, you know, to be revered. So that was strange. And Alex, you don't like the Christopher Reed thing because you feel like it's a betrayal, that he wouldn't have wanted that, because I'm sure they got, you know, his family or whatever, whoever. I'm sure holds, nobody holds has rights. reported that at all, which is surprising. I mean, it's the sort of thing, like, to, to make a direct comparison, Disney came out and said, hey, we're going to do this uh, Disney 100 video where we're going to have a genie from Aladdin, Robin Williams' is genie from Aladdin, with unaired, unearthed uh, audio interact with Josh Gad as Olaf from Frozen, and we're going to have the two of them talk to each other. And fans immediately were like, how dare you, Robin Williams, when he, in his will, was like, do not use any of my audio or any footage or anything like that until 25 years after my death. Um, Josh Gad came back and was like, listen, I completely understand that. We know that. We talked to his estate. Here's what they said about it. This is quotes from them. Everything has been cleared by them. Obviously, I understand your feelings, but we're treating this respectfully. I still have issues with it and disrespecting Robin Williams' wishes about that sort of thing, but at least like they came out immediately and said that. As far as I've seen, there's been nothing about that from Christopher Reeves. And beyond the fact that like Apparently, Helen Slater, who plays Supergirl in that scene, was actually there, and then they de-aged her, and then they take Mm. Christopher Reeves and diddly recreate him. It's just this weird, uncomfortable mishmash of various things that are happening, but I'll throw out to you, this is just in terms of the movie and nothing external to the movie, my biggest problem with this, why is it not different flashes? We get like one click quick flash that everybody thought was Teddy Sears for some reason from the Flash TV show, who I don't even want to get into the continuity there, but he was like, he came out, he's like, no, I I think I'd remember being in a big DC movie. That wasn't me. (laughs) There was also a report that John Wesley Shipp, who played the TV version of Flash, that was him, but weirdly de-aged and doesn't look like anything like him either. Um, But ultimately, it's probably just like somebody, you know? Yeah. That's what my thought was. I was like, oh, a stranger. Right. So like (laughs) why I understand that you have this archival footage from DC, but just in terms of the movie is about the Flash and the history of the Flash, and particularly in that moment, 
you have three flashes that are facing off it is bonkers to me that they're like and here's superman and supergirl and here's another well, superman that's nicholas cage but cgi'd it doesn't make any I sense i think that's that's the original sin i think of this movie and i think they they had some good ideas here and the flash is a good character this interpretation is very different from the uh the comic book flash very comic book, very barry allen very neurotic obsessed with food almost exclusively that's all he talks about uh, in the movie but like that's the choices they made this the, attaching it to superman and again revisiting the zod stuff that we saw in batman's perspective we saw now we've seen flash's perspective that i feel like is why they put the superman they're really forcing superman to be like look superman's cool because it's just it hasn't really worked and that to me is where your main character is the Flash, but the Flash is not the main character, despite the fact that there are two and finally three of, of the same character in this movie. Batman takes up a lot of space. Batman does a lot of cool stuff to Batman, three by the end of it. It's just like, it's another mission. And that's why I think people don't can't handle these movies anymore. Cause it's like a little formulaic and it's just like so much the pasta has no flavor just like the pasta that bruce wayne seems to be eating in his very wealthy home pete I, I, you threw me with the pasta thing but uh, yeah well, how does bruce wayne not have a nice sauce he doesn't have anything in the pasta no base he's, fresh basil he's, he's out of his mind dude he's an old guy he's losing his mind back he's up. Not losing his mind. he crushes it alfred died and bruce wayne ground him up and put him in the pasta sauce oh, and he's slowly you, eating him over the course of years disrespect alfred like that come on no you that's not disrespect that's every butler wanted. expects to be eaten of course no, you eat the true. butler that's Everyone why they the serve the food the to you and you know they hand you a bowl of soup and then you accidentally bite their hands you're like that kind of tastes good and the butler's like please eat me when i'm dead sir the best butlers awesome. are eaten. That's why it's like when the butler did it, he's like, I don't want to be eaten yet. So he kills somebody. Mm -hmm. Right, Pete? It's when, that's where oh. Eat the Rich came from. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's talk about Michael Keaton in this role. I really am going to try not to be a negative Nancy for the rest of the podcast. So instead, I'll turn it mostly over to you guys for what you guys think, because I don't want to sit here and rail against the whole movie. That's no fun. Um, Pete? You were highly anticipating Michael Keaton's return as Batman. You were super excited about that. I feel like that was the main thing you were looking forward to going into this movie. How did it pan out for you over the course of actually watching it? Yeah, I mean, it was great because uh, he was unrecognizable with the long hair. It really kind of threw me because I saw him with the short hair in the trailer. So I was almost like, oh, my God, you know, um, you know, who the heck is that? Um, and then... Yeah, and then you kind of, uh, he slowly kind of turns back into himself. And, uh, you know, emotional when he, you know, kind of sacrifices him, himself for the team and then says, you know, like, Barry's like, I'm sorry, you know, he just kind of was like, no, man, I've, I've felt more alive than I have in years or whatever he says to him as he's dying. It was just really cool. It was great to see him suit back up. You know, the if you want to get nuts line, whatever, that's kind of eye rolly, but whatever. It was a um, made up thing and they called it back and, it was just cool the uh to see him suited up again to hear the music to see the old batmobile um you know i don't remember the plane being able to flip like that but whatever you know what i mean it's still well, he fun. worked on it he worked mm -hmm. on it it's been a yeah. bunch of years he's had time he's older yeah. yeah yeah and uh yeah i mean it was just uh it was it was great to see him kind of donning the suit i didn't stop to think the reality of how old he is and if he actually punched somebody if it would break his own hand or whatever but um uh, just oh, I, I think withered, that's what won me over bones. i think that's yeah. what won me over about this movie is just all the nostalgia of it and also the fact that it really wasn't um a flash movie which was enjoyable <laughs> Weird. justin what did you think of michael keaton coming back as batman I like him just from a pure performance standpoint. I think he's a he's a great Batman. To see him, in, great be actor, a little, cra little crazy, yeah, great actor, great Batman. Uh, see, so be a little crazier in the beginning. I thought was fun. I, it's just crazy to me the timeline thing because that made absolutely no sense. And they never why say it if you're not going to reference it. I wanted so hard for him to at the end be like, hey. It's, I, I, I'm actually Thomas Wayne. Cause he touches his, the picture, he touches Bruce's face. Like he's the one that was killed. I was like, we, we can handle that. And it's worth it for the scene from the comic 
where Flash comes back with a letter from, oh, from yeah. Thomas to Bruce. That would have been a perfect end note for the Batman part of this conversation that happens about loss and like going back to fix it, how your scars define you. If we got that scene, I think it would have been awesome. And we still could have lived with all of the everything else. Right when he's dying, he's like, I'm actually Thomas Wayne. It was Bruce who died. And I've spent the rest of my life trying to make up for that. Like, I, I feel like they have to have considered that at some point. But I'll tell you, we put up this video uh, where me and Pete were speculating about is it Thomas or Bruce on TikTok. People were livid. They were like absolutely livid at the very idea they're like no way michael keaton is bruce wayne how dare you what are you talking about so there had to be some sort of focus grouping of that at some point in warner brothers they're like oh no he's got to be bruce wayne he can't be tough I, I don't that's that but that's the problem you, you can't you have to make creative choices for the mm -hmm. best creative choice not do like, you think that happened across the board for this movie is that well definitely uh, it was driven definitely, by creativity definitely. in the most part <laughs> But I will say there are some moments that, like the scene with the the roommates, where uh, oh, like, mm -hmm. the main berries me. I thought that scene was funny, and that scene worked. I thought. So like that's what I wanted. The fact more that of those they walked movies. in there, two of the same person, and that girl didn't even. She was just well, and actually, She's like, it set up one of the two jokes that I liked in the movie, uh, which the one, the only one in the entire like range of the movie that made me laugh out loud was when Barry they're eating the spaghetti. And our Barry is like, says something about Batman, and the other Barry is like, "You're Batman." And he's like, "Why did you think we were here?" And he's like, "I yeah, thought we were here funny. for the cousins' dinner." Yeah, the cousins' good. dinner. The very other cousins' line. dinner callback was hysterical. That was very good. The other thing that made me laugh out loud uh, was the tooth falling out at the end because that was a long enough rage Great between callback. him losing his tooth and then it falling out in the last shot. That also made me laugh. Wow. I agree because when he lost the tooth, and I was like, "That was." A waste of time. Like, I was like, oh, thank God they had the callback <laughs> at the end because that was so weird. If it did so you have any crazy glues it back in his mouth, gross. <laughs> I mean, did you feel I will say seen? I've done that before. Yeah, no, I was going to say. <laughs> did I, you feel there's, seen? No, there's nothing wrong with gluing a tooth back. Oh, okay. That's First time you saw yourself on screen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank okay. you for the uh, tooth loss representation in this. Uh, it was weird to me, and again, I know I'm I'm try really trying not to be like over. You negative. did a horrible job of letting us talk. By the way, I just want you to know that <laughs> I can't do it. I'm sorry, no. I give up. Uh, is it weird to you that Batman was the one explaining time travel? That just struck me as very strange. He was like, "No, no, here's how time travel works," and I was like, "That's not your deal, man." Yes, big time. Because also, he didn't seem to care. He was like, oh, you traveled the time? Hey, watch out for that. It can really bite you in the end. <laughs> anyway, back to my car. I was like, what is it? That's the thing. Is the Batman... The, I the loved... Batman... It. I thought that was a very much like old dude who's over it and just kind of being like, here's how it works, kid. Let me tell you one more time. Because he's been spending like... Uh, this is not, this is not old. This is young Bruce. This is younger Bruce. Ben Affleck. No, no, I'm talking. He's talking oh, about no, the no. spaghetti. Oh, when I'm he talking about the spaghetti. The spaghetti, spaghetti. Oh, yeah. I was talking about in the beginning when Flash no. goes to uh, Batfleck. He's like, "Yeah, I traveled the time," and he was like, "I don't give a shit. See ya." And then he also <laughs> says, "Don't let your tragedy define you." I was like, "That's a hell of a thing." For hell you of a thing for you would be saying. <laughs> I will say on the Batfleck thing, his suit looked like shit, and the action scene looked like shit. But he seemed like he said, probably the most comfortable he has ever been as Bruce Wayne. I agree. Like, I liked him in this. Yeah, particularly that scene. I know we're making fun of it, but him in that scene, he actually, for the first time, felt like the Batman who can prescribe things to people and be like, no, I know the right way to do things. Yeah. I'm going to tell you how to do it. And so I like that. I, I don't necessarily need to see more of Batfleck, but I was happy he got that one scene there. Good for him. I like the one moment, and I thought the beginning of this movie was problematic for, all across the board. But the one moment that I thought was nice was Wonder Woman and Batman being like, hey! Oh it's my like, God. They yeah, are so happy little, hey? I love that. Oh my God. And then the lasso scene that we got, come on. I did that not like. Was We've seen hilarious. that joke before, and literally at nope. the, after they do the joke, they're like, Works every time. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Especially when that's it how you works your every joke. time. They Batman. Well, we do get the revelation that Barry Allen is a literally a 30 year old virgin virgin in that scene, which is weird. That's a weird uh, detail to throw in there. Agreed. He throws uh, himself you know, I, into his work. Whatever, dude. Another thing. While we're talking about the beginning, like the way Barry they shot Barry running 
to that to Gotham City is so like it's like a dance rather than actual running. And I don't know. It's like they were like on the comic book cover. He has his arms like this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, that's because it's a comic book. Like, you don't have to make him do all these weird things well, that I think stopped, he like lined it up. I mean, I, I don't mind started. a little bit of that. Like, that's his little ritual. It's more when he was running across the country and he was sort of like slow motion skiing, mm-hmm. but moving so fast. I was like, how does this physically work? It doesn't make that sense. That was, I mean, and they make fun of that later, right? Where he when he's running in the circle speed and he's running yeah, around in a circle. That was funny. Room. But my main reaction when I saw that is people... And rightly so, you might say, make fun of the Flash TV show for like doing the arm back and forth running on a green screen treadmill thing, which looks dinky. It's a CW show. They have one one thousandth of the budget of this movie. And the fact that they somehow made his running look even stupider in the movie was very surprising to me. Uh, Agreed. I thought that was a misstep. The um... no pun intended. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I just want to say, like having Batman just kind of say his issues out loud was hysterical. And that awkward afterwards of them not knowing and like there's nothing we can say now, like it was just a fun moment to sit in for a little bit before we moved you on. Know, you know what that reminded me of a scene from Ted Lasso. So I know why you liked it. It was very much that it was like... an honest moment between all of them. And I loved how Wonder Woman not only loved it, but handled it. Um, and yeah, and their awkward hello was great. Yeah, anytime Wonder Woman was on the screen, it was absolutely glorious. The uh, only 30 seconds? Yep. To a total of 30. She's like, I got to go. Yep. Uh, how about the transition from Billy Crudup as, uh, as Barry Allen's dad to Ron Livingston playing the dad? And in the flashback scene, he's such a goofy weirdo. All of the flashback stuff, I thought at the beginning, I was like, oh boy, we have this is not going well. I thought they were really bad, poorly written. The characters are not believable, which is especially amazing that I thought the end when Barry's with his mom really worked and hit the emotional notes that I think it needed to. So I don't know how they, they lowered the bar so low and then brought it back up at the end. Well, I think part of the reason that doesn't work, or at least that didn't work for me beyond literally everything else is that you're having Barry, physically go back into this memory of his childhood, like go back to his childhood home, see himself as a child, revisit his memories and sort of like this memory theater type thing. And then immediately after that, he goes back in time. So it's yeah. already, you're you're doing too many things. It's like in a dream sequence or in a flashback sequence when some one of the characters has a flashback inside of a flashback sequence. That's too flash. much. Yeah, flash. Um, and it's the same sort of thing there where... They're just going for too many ele- elements at the same time. I-, I kind of felt the same way about how they played out Barry's powers that like, okay, fine. If you're going to set up that he has a watch that tells him how much he needs to eat and mm-hmm. that is how he powers up is by eating food, that's fine. But that plays out just at the beginning of the movie and never towards the end versus at the end Right before the final battle, Barry tells the other Barry, hey, real quick, so you know, you got a, uh, you don't have a suit that lets out all of your electricity. That's going to be really important. We got to work on this right now. And that is suddenly like his main power. It's the sort of thing of like, set up the powers in the beginning and have yeah. them pay out over the course of the movie. Or alternately, set it up in the training sequence because they already have some training stuff that's going on between the two Barrys versus this is, the, this is the same thing I was saying with like the characters leaving and immediately coming back. There's things that are set up that pay off one or two scenes later, and that's just not good structuring. I think that's something that comes through various rewrites and changes and working on it and various yeah. regimes at Warner Brothers. Yeah, Over anyways, uh, I think one of the nice moments was, uh, I know it didn't make sense that, you know, she, his mom is hugging a stranger basically. Um, but I was still bawling my eyes out when, it, when he went back and, uh, That's good. You, you know, uh, and also the fact that, uh, he changed where the soup was and then explained it to the jury. Like they were audience members yeah, uh, of the, the movie reporters. was just like, uh, yeah, the reporters. Yeah. So it was just it was like, I, I, I thought all of that worked pretty well. Yeah, emotionally it did it did a great job. Um and uh yeah, I mean it, you you have to like 
have an like that has to to make it worth it for him to go through all that you know what i mean like the mom relationship has to be so moving you know what i mean and i feel like it really did kind of like set i mean uh, uh pay that off i mean i was bawling my eyes out in the, in the middle of a movie theater so you know around kids yeah papa pete why you cry so what did sure. you what did you think about the move that he solves his mother mur- mother's murder by realizing it's a random dude that wandered into their house who killed her? Uh, agree, weird yada yada yada. The way they're like, wow, I'll just make sure that tomato sauce is there, so so Ron Livingston doesn't leave, and the stranger who murders her doesn't come in. I was like, what? Just stop the person <laughs> who's gonna kill her. Yeah, you're gonna let or a killer something. just wander around who goes into houses and stabs people. <laughs> yes, I, I, I assume. Heart. I assume that was the sort of thing where they're like, no, it's actually going to be Eobard Thawne, the reverse flash. We'll yeah. pay that off in the second movie or whatever. But it's such a strange thing for it to happen. Yeah. Like, not that I see, need to see his mom die or anything like that, but we spent That's so much you're time. Saying. You're that. saying that. You're, you're saying, saying that. I would love to love. see that. I would love to see that. Specifically her. Yeah. I would love to see her get stabbed. I'd love to see the knife enter her stomach. Yeah. You know? uh, I think you want to get nuts while well, Alex is being crazy. You want to get nuts. Let's get nuts. Did not work. Very strange. Not necessary. Oh, it was a, oh. just a nod. It was a nod. Michael to... Keaton would have literally rather been anywhere else in that moment. And you no, it seemed it. like his idea. Like he wanted no. to say it. He, he, he was... came up with the line in the first well, why place. Why do you think afterwards he vomited? Like he literally yeah. on screen. He was like, oh. you want to get nuts? You get nuts. And he's like, oh, Dude, God, he I've made so up that things in my career. Oh, he God. made up that line in the 80s and then got to pay it off now. He pay was it off. Not a payoff. Not Shut a payoff. up. No. I hope he got paid off to have to say that. They should have had $1,000 on a tray. The weirder to reference to me, which I could not believe they did this because I made a joke and I was like, online, haha, that they were going to reference the slide. The fact that they referenced the Kim Bassinger weight line, like there's oh. that whole exchange in Batman where he's like, how, yeah. much, do how much do you weigh? And I think well, if the, I remember, she says They're trying to deal with the realism of the, you know, like. But a callback to that where he's like, how much do you guys weigh? And they're like, we all weigh 180, which is what he says to Kid Bassinger, I believe, if I remember correctly after that. Very weird to throw that out there. Very weird. I, I agree. It is weird to put in. The I don't think Kim Bassinger said I weigh 180, bro. No, she says 120. And I think at the end, he's like, more like 160 or more like. Yeah. I don't think you said one. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> one right. feels it's a, a little high. It's not a good look, but, you know, it is a callback to. It's a weird scene in the original movie, too. I'm like, why are we spending time talking about her weight? This is strange. Yeah, it's great. The semantics, joke. the realism of, you know, trying yeah, to. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. In, in yeah, I want the Tim realism. Burton's I also battle. want. I want to see all of them go to the bathroom. When do they go to the bathroom? <laughs> I want to make sure we're as real as possible. Mm-hmm. Are they getting a weird. good night's sleep? I want to, I want to watch yeah. the entire thing feels like not um the other thing i want to say is the iris character is deeply misserved in this movie uh why would she like him at the end he's done nothing but avoid her like just a a miss and they could have just done it differently and it's an easy obvious miss i feel like we haven't talked about supergirl though i'm mispronouncing her name but sasha kaye who plays supergirl shows up here as uh, Kara zor she is who they find instead of Superman being held prisoner and they rescue her. Uh, she ultimately fights Zod and dies a bunch of times, just like Michael Keaton's Batman. Uh, what'd you think about her in the role? I thought it was cool. It was a fun surprise that I didn't uh, think was going to happen when they found her instead of, uh, I was like, what Superman is it going to be? And then I was like, oh, you know, in the comics, because you know this super person hasn't seen the the light they're all kind of like small and you know you think superman's uh or you know more jack so i thought it was a cool uh twist that makes sense because it's like you know they do have two kind of you know if we're changing things why not have that be also the change and i thought that was interesting um so yeah i i think she was cool and it was uh you know uh, nice to see her as the character kind of come around. I, I would have wanted to see more of her. She was one of the bright spots of the movie to me. I, I don't feel like we got enough of a character arc for her necessarily. And But yeah. I don't know. We've talked about like they're doing the Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow movie. I don't know if they're going to bring her in for that, but I thought she was really interesting screen so, presence. So. Like I liked watching her. So yeah. whatever it is, whether it's DC stuff or otherwise, I'm curious to see her do more. 
I'm just happy they really defined that um, baby Kal El was straight up murdered. By yeah, him. <laughs> the movie the surprisingly anti baby. Yeah, like, this whole movie was. Very weird. Yeah, I mean, I was feeling it from the beginning. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, a plot where Zod's like, he's like, you know, he had the whole codex in his body, except he didn't. You have it in you. I was like, what? 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 <laughs> what? Why? We need Why blood? say that? It yeah. only counts. It's a lie. It's not what happened in the movie. Why are you saying it here? It's so weirdly. Why say the thing that we don't need to yada yada? Right. Or you could just yada yada it rather than just say it. Well, yeah, they don't need to say anything about the codex. It could just be in Supergirl. That's why they need her versus like, not that I want to be slavish to continuity or anything like that, but they already are doing, they set up like, this is going to be exactly like Man of Steel. Everything's going to happen exactly the same, except totally different. And the requirements of how we activate the genome are different. And also we're going to have this final fight, not in Metropolis, much more interesting visual place to do it in. Instead, we're going to do it in the middle of a blank open field. Yeah. Uh, which is much easier to CGI, again, in a very bad way. Well, but I, also I'm like, you, they could just fight because she's standing in the way of this plan. Like, we don't mm -hmm. need a whole thing. Get it. Like, that's what, we don't need a whole thing should be what every comic book movie starts at. And then they mm -hmm. can write a script that is like, you know what, maybe we don't need this whole thing. Let's just focus on the interesting parts about this character and tell that story. This is... This movie, you could just feel too many cooks throughout it, and that comes from yeah. 10 years of development and multiple years of shooting and different regimes. I mean, if we want to jump to the last scene for a second, this came out after the movie was released, but in the movie, obviously, big spoiler here, we've also already talked about a lot of spoilers, but in the movie, Barrett gets back, he's like, great, I saved my dad, he's out of jail, I'm in my regular timeline, and then Batman calls him and gets out of the car, and it's not... Uh, ben Affleck and it's not Michael Keaton it's actually George Clooney and then he smiles and his tooth falls out and the implication there is he's actually in the wrong timeline so in fact his dad is rotting in jail somewhere and is now his son is gone forever so very sad uh, result for that multiverse version of Robin Livingston but they went through multiple iterations of this final scene here for literally like different regimes at Warner Brothers had to reshoot the scene. So the original scene, which they shot, was Michael Keaton and Sasha Kaye as Supergirl were there on the courtroom steps waiting for him. And he was like, oh, uh -oh I'm in the wrong universe. Mm -hmm. And then they did another version when they were ostensibly going to bring Henry Cavill back as Superman and continue the DCEU. Oh, wow. And so they had Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, I think Michael Keaton and then maybe Jason Momoa or maybe I, I think Sasha Kaya might have been there as well um, because they were like, maybe we'll use her some more. So they all met him on the courtroom steps. And then ultimately mm. this version, I think they shot like in the past couple of months, like they were like, OK, we can't do that anymore because none of those people are super bad or anything. We've already got a bunch of Batmans. What other Batman could they get? So they ended up showing the movie to George Clooney, and he was like, yeah, sure, I hated doing Batman and Robin, but I'll come back and do this, and he makes the cameo in the movie. I got to say, I know that opens up. Uh, that's interesting and all strange. All of those are bad versions, uh, <laughs> except. But I, honestly, I thought this was fun. I'm here mm -hmm. for it. Like, I, I liked it. It was funny. Clooney's just like, it, it's the, in a movie that goes meta, him smiling like the Kathy Canary of getting this payday and just being like, look, I'm a Batman too. So it's like, I'm like, yes, good. It brought together and made the meta shit make sense in a way that I actually appreciated. And I don't care that he's on the wrong earth. He'll just run into another one. And we may never see the flash again anyway. So I guess it was do? just when you think about it for a second to me, it's like a very, a bummer of a dark you. ending after you've had what is ostensibly this emotional catharsis of saving his dad. His dad dies in prison. Well, well but like we don't know that if it could yeah, be like well world. this is the time like blah 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 like he this, got shipped, a million he got ways. shipped in prison no i know it, do i need uh, to throw up some pasta on Luther. the floor <laughs> to show you what's up yeah what exactly some tasteless bruce also Wayne that pasta? wasn't the real last scene the real last scene was with the jason momoa in a puddle which was or crazy dangerous to do if you're drinking at night but if you're aquaman you can pass out in puddles mm -hmm. Woohoo! this is my home so let's right let's here. jump to that for then for a second because this is something that 
in a very convoluted way, establishes where we are and what's going on with the DCU and these further DC movies going forward. So like we just said, Ezra Miller Flash is now in a different universe, not in his original universe. And in this final scene, he's talking to Jason Momoa Aquaman and basically is like, yeah, you're pretty much the same in this universe as you were in my previous universe. And this in my mind is 100% holy to be like, yeah, we still have an Aquaman movie to do. It's the same Aquaman. Don't worry about it. He's not in a different universe than The Flash or anything like that. That is following up on this thing. Whatever this new version of the DCEU is, that's the whole function of that scene in my mind. I thought it was just, hey, Aquaman didn't get a cameo. He should get a fucking cameo. That yeah, too, I, probably. Both yeah. of those things are real. Um, I'll be honest with you. I had to leave before to pick up my kids before I saw the scene. So I just looked up what it was online, and I was like, I didn't need to see that. It's fine. You really didn't. It's not. No, that you got to see it in the big screen, dude, because that puddle it looks, it looks, looks not so that much funny. bigger and inviting. It's the it's idea not that funny. the, it's the big hero. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. What were you I was gonna say? say it looks like the, to have the big hero of the next movie to come out lay in a shitty puddle. I was like. <laughs> Okay, seems like a mistake. Why include him here? Is he supposed to be cool? He's drunk. Yeah, he's got a, a drinking problem. Isn't that cool? And That's normal fine. people I, who have a drinking all the problem. Time. I, I've seen people online puddle, have probably problems. Gonna die. Like, I've seen people online be like, "How dare you make Aquaman, Jason Momoa drunk?" And I'm like, "Have you seen literally any movie, not just with him as Aquaman, but literally any movie with Jason Momoa?" That's fine. That is not my yeah, problem agreed. with the scene. My problem with the scene is it's not funny and it's very confusing if you aren't like multiverse continuity braid and understand why they're doing this scene. So to end on that movie is a is a big fizzle for me. But I'm glad you had a yeah. good time, Pete. What else for the movie? What else would you want to shout out that you guys liked or didn't like or anything that jumped out to you? Well, I don't I don't like your attitude. No, I'm sorry, man. Hmm. Did you feel his attitude in the Flash movie when you were watching it with your children? No. no. How did you just... feel when I was dressed up as several children that forced you to sit on the end? <laughs> Papa Pete. Yeah, I do, I do a reverse of three kids stacked on top of each other under a trench coat so they could see. So you take the trench coat off and you're basically. Yeah, I, I stack myself into six children so I could get into PG 13 movies. Wow, that's a harder trick to it's pull. It's much harder, but. Keep three kids in a trench coat's hard enough. To be six kids uh, walking normally, I guess, is very strange. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, cool. Why don't we talk about the future then? If there's nothing else to call out about this movie, what, if anything, do you think James Gunn's DCU is going to take away from the Flash movie? I think nothing. Yeah. It, I, I think James Gunn is going, it's like a hard reboot. If mm -hmm. James Gunn you, maybe uses some ideas, but I don't think we want to see, we have to lose this mess. If there's nothing else this box office is saying is like, we don't want all that. So like James Gunn's only hope is to do a hard reset and make this Superman movie stand alone and be amazing. If they keep Ezra Miller as the Flash after this box office weekend, not to mention all of his crimes over the yeah. past couple of years, insane. That would be yeah, the I, most I insane so. move I have ever seen. I think there's a possibility. I guess we'll see how Aquaman 2 does, but they could continue with him. Obviously, they're setting up him to at least have that movie on his own terms. And everybody likes Jason Momoa in pretty much everything. So that's a possibility there. Uh, I They shot Michael Keaton in two more things, right? Like, I think he was... Batgirl? Uh, well, the Batgirl, obviously, which is... I've seen several people be like, come on, The Flash was a dud, just released Batgirl already. That's the opposite of what's going to happen. They're going to be yeah. like, no, do we need to release Blue Beetle and Aquaman 2 now? This is terrible. They're obviously going Blue Beetle's to going to be great, dude. What are you talking about? I'm looking forward to it. I'm just saying, like, yeah. they have had a string of absolute duds from the DC stable. So there's got to be discussions going on about, like, can we take a tax break on these as well? What are we thinking here to make our money back? Because even if Blue Beetle is good, I, I think it's also, like, it's it has Shazam, too. It has Black Adam. It has The Flash. All of these things holding it down at this point. Yeah. I just don't understand why you're not working on a far sector movie right now. Mm. I what? mean, that would be, that's a weird left turn, but sure. Oh. Yeah. That would be good. Oh, I got you now. Far sector, the comic book. Yeah. Is it far sector, like a, another uh, unrelated thing? 
No, it's a great Green Lantern no, story. Of course, I know that. Yes, the Flash is not a Green Lantern. I don't know if you know that. Peter. No, but I'm just saying, if you're Got DC and you're talking about I, we true. don't know what to do, I, you know, trying to help, man. Yeah, uh, the suit bit was pretty good, by the way. Him opening up the ring and the suit just coming super tiny and falling on the ground. That was cute. That was fun. Yeah, the way yeah. Like, don't let it touch the ground. That was fun. yeah. Suit looked bad otherwise, though. Didn't like it. The yeah. TV suit, Grant Gustin suit, much better. Wow, I would go back to the original Flash suit from the original Flash series with John Wesley Ship. Also, a really Best good suit. Flash suit. Yeah, both very good. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll see. I don't really think they're going to take anything away from this. Uh, just last thing I'll ask because this has been part of the discussion but what do you think box office wise in terms of potential we were talking about this a bit on our patreon slack i feel like this puts a lot more pressure on superman legacy to deliver particularly because james yes. gunn like hitched his horse or whatever the expression is to the flash in wagon. a big way hitched his wagon you you can hitch a horse to something as well right yeah, but what? You hit your horse to a horse, like a post. Another horse. You hit your wagon to a horse. You race two horses you together. Sneak into a movie theater. What? <laughs> An Amish movie theater. Mm -hmm. uh, in any case, uh, well, what do you guys think? I mean, that's my opinion on it. I, I still think I'm confident in James Gunn and what he's going to deliver, but I really do feel like this has amped up the pressure considerably for Superman. It seems like you're trying to pick a fight with your dad. I would never yeah, do that. Don't My dad is that. the strongest man I've ever met. Uh, what What do you He's guys Superman. think? Do you have any opinions, Justin? Box office yeah. king over here. Yeah. yeah, I do think the the pressure is high, and I, I think, but I think he's aware of it. It's not like this is sneaking up on him. He made the choice to write and direct this movie. He's been typing the casting. He has made a bunch of announcements. He's like he's being very public about his his choices in the movie, and he knows, especially as these movies continue to do badly that it's all on him to make this movie an absolute crush. In a, you know, there's a lot of people saying our oh, superhero movie is dead. And I don't think so. I just think this formulaic version where the movies are overstuffed, over complex, and there's not a lot of character and heart are not doing well anymore. I think he's gonna Blue try Beetle. to follow the Guardians Spider-Verse model and give us that Superman movie that is finally a Superman movie that people can, that reflects the actual fandom of Superman that exists in the world and hasn't ever been serviced in, in the, uh, at least not lately in the feature film situation. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I'll throw out there, the hope, I hope the lesson they take from this that I sincerely doubt is don't overstuff it. Just let James Gunn yeah. do his thing. You know, it doesn't need to be Superman legacy also introducing Batman and newly the flash and Gal Gadot comes back as Wonder Woman and, we have all this fan service and other things. Let James Gunn do what he do, does best, which he did with Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and the other movies that he's done, even the Suicide Squad. Like, there's stuff for comic book fans that you geek out about, but that comes out of the characters first and the emotions first, just like you were saying, Justin. And I bet they're going to treat this like Iron Man, the first Iron Man, where they're going to do do the movie, the story it stands on its own. We don't just have let them all that. do improv and then just have the camera capture that comedy. No, going. and honestly, watching this movie, I was like, the Marvel model doesn't work for DC heroes. The heroes are built on being like we've talked about a little bit larger than life. When you drag them down, it makes it just tarnishes them, and that's not what they are. They're something else, and they can still be funny. Funny things can happen in the movie, but it's not that style of like. Eh, this is dumb. It's like, no, your whole thing is it is not dumb. You stand for all these things. So, so yeah. I mean, it's that old saying with baby in the bathwater or throw a baby out of a hospital. And if you don't have one baby, throw an entire wing. Mm -hmm. So exactly. the baby into the microwave. And yeah. That's how you get into a G-rated movie. If you would. But, yes. uh, one last thing. I just think James Gunn would be well serviced to make sure that he doesn't have to put bat, a Batman in his Superman movie. Because yes. I think, while Batman is cool, and it was cool to see Batman in this, all the Batman in this movie, we need to do focus on the character and tell that story. Agreed. If you'd like to support this podcast and all the podcasts we do, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Facebook and YouTube. Come hang out. We would love to chat with you about the DCU and The Flash. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe, listen, and follow the show at Comic Book Live on Twitter, Comic Book Club Live on TikTok and Instagram, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, Dad, pressure's on, but you're still <laughs> the strongest man in my life. You are Superman. And Papa Pete, you're also <laughs> my dad. 
Papa Pete.